What's up, folks? It is, once again, Dr. Remy LeBeau, and I'm here in the x -Lair to provide you with your new treatment to help you deal with your sta X-Men statue withdrawal syndrome, the terrible disease that you have been inflicted with and need treatment for on a regular basis in order to endure your life. Today I'm going to help you endure this day by providing you with something brand new, something brand spanking new. The FDA just approved it as a uh, an appropriate treatment for your condition, and that is the Beast, the original Beast statue by Bowen Designs. This is the fourth of the five original X-Men that are being produced by Bowen Designs. Uh, the first three were Cyclops. Marvel Girl and Angel. I've posted stuff on Cyclops and Marvel Girl thus far on my website, on my blog, on my blog, as well as on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in checking more information out about those two statues, there is more information available for you. I will be posting stuff on Angel coming up. The original Iceman statue should be coming out by the end of the year, so that one will complete. The set, that one's going to be the more snowy sort of uh, Iceman, which is going to be a variant of the clear X-Factor Iceman, which has yet to be released. And it's just going to be like more sort of coarsely snowy, uh, texturized as far as, you know, throughout the body in order to represent um, Bobby Drake in a, a, a very rudimentary phase of his uh mutation in which he didn't really understand how to how to manipulate his power too well that's going to be the fifth statue it's going to look great this one looks great with the rest of the uh original x-men statues that have been produced thus far if you want to see them together i've got a picture on my blog post so check that out um so it's been a while since this one was sneaked uh it's been a while since it was put up for sale there are three versions of this statue that have been made um, the first one is this one that you see here, the original X-Men statue. Um, the second one is going to be an X-Factor version of the statue, which is going to be posed a little bit differently. And the third one is a blue and red version of Beast, a Beast in a, a blue and red costume, um, which has not been put up for sale yet. It may never be put up for sale. Sometimes statue producers like Bone Designs, Kotobukiya uh, famously, um, and Sideshow Collectibles sometimes will sneak certain things online um, in, in order to sort of gauge the public's interest in those things and never actually release them. Bowen has, hasn't actually done that too much, so I, I have faith that we'll be seeing that third version of Beast at some point, but, you know, you never know. Shite happens, folks. Um, so, I mean, at the very least, we got this one, and we have the X-Factor Beast coming out soon, and that's very exciting. Uh, these were sculpted by the Kucherak brothers, the brothers that can do no wrong when it comes to sculpting. They are amazing. Um, they are the perfect sculptors to take on Beast in his human form. Uh, there's a, There was another version of Beast already released by Bone Designs. I haven't posted anything on that yet on my blog nor on my YouTube channel, but I will. Coming up, it's a blue Beast. Um, it's the Jim Lee X-Men 90s version of Beast. It's a very nice statue. It's sculpted by Eric Sosa. There's actually a variant, a variant of that one also with a slightly different face on a slightly different uh, base, which represents Beast in his Avengers uh, team look, which which is a, is, a, is a version of Beast that I am not necessarily connected to because I never read Avengers, and so I didn't read that era of the Avengers and so I didn't get that statue but it's a cool statue to get if you're interested if you're a big beast fan I would I would suggest getting all of them or just getting the ones that suit you or not getting any of them and just looking at statue videos you don't have to do a thing my friends um, that's why we're here that's why us statue video people are here to just kind of whet your appetite for what's out there and just kind of help you check things out like I'm helping you to check out this version of beast the human version of Beast. It is the only um, statue of the human Hank McCoy that has been released. Uh, there is also a comicette of Beast that was released by Sideshow Collectibles. It's a one quarter scale. It has Beast in his cat Beast uh, mutated form, 
when Grant Morrison took over X Men Volume Two, the comic, in I think in two thousand one, and turned it into New X Men. One of the first things he introduced was the secondary mutation, and and uh, so Beast mutated again into Cat Beast, and Emma Frost did, mutated again and got to her ability to took into to turn into Diamond form. Um, Sideshow Collectibles made a statue of Cat Beast. It's really cool. It has him sort of with a bunch of books, and he's reading like a physics book. It's very well done. It's not my bag. It's not a statue that I wanted because. I'm not looking to do a, like a one quarter scale modern X-Men display because one quarter scale statues are hard to display because they need a lot of room and so I, I opted not to get that one but I, I really like it a lot and I'm sure everybody that has it really likes it because it's really impressive. It's a really impressive piece. Um, I think that pretty much runs the gamut of beast statues. I did post something on my blog about this um, Beast maquette that was produced by Sideshow Collectibles, also representing him and sort of what the creators of X Men Three, the movie, uh, had envisioned him to look like naked, which is like really weird and like really odd. I don't understand why they released it as a statue, and I hate it. I think it's ugly, and I'll never get it. But for those of you that did get it, good for you. You know, it's it's cool to have uh, the things that you like, I guess. <laughs> different folks for different strokes. Uh, anyway, so again, going back to this, the you know the subject of the video. This is the first uh, Hank McCoy statue that was made in human form. Um, I'm really happy the Kucherek brothers took it on. I think they did a fantastic job. A um, couple of logistical uh, pieces of information. Um, this is number 56 of 450. So there are only 450 of these in existence. Let's give them a little twirl there. Look at that. Look at Beast. He's looking all beastly and stuff. Um, 450 of these so what's interesting about the addition sizes of these um, is that there were only 450 made of the original Cyclops statue but there were 500 made of the Marvel girl and 500 made of Angel um, I don't know I don't know what exactly the logic was behind it I can only postulate that Bone Designs thought okay some people are gonna want Marvel girl by herself because there's a lot of hardcore Jean fans that just like Jean Grey and so they they just want to, you know, have as many statues of Jean Grey as possible. And so there's 50 extra for those that don't want to make an entire set. And then I think that I think the, the logic is similar for Angel. I think there might be people that just like to buy Angel statues, like statues of, of like, you know, traditional Angel sort of uh, concept outside of the mutant world where, you know, I guess biblical angels is the best way to describe them you know just humans with wings and so I'm gonna assume that maybe the logic was alright well let's give those angel buyers like 50 extra angels to buy so that they don't get in the way of people that are interested in making the entire set and so with Beast and with Cyclops you get 450 people aren't gonna buy them um, for reasons that are just unique and uh, outside of just the logic of trying to sort of form the original five and so th there's only 450 of them and so thus ultimately there were there will be at least 450 of each of these five to be formed into a set for those that want to make the set um, I don't know it's just me sort of speculating I don't know what's actually the case it might just be like some contractual something to do with the way uh, you know bone designs deals with the manufacturers in China who knows but it's good to know that there are some edition size discrepancies for those that are sort of interested in getting these. Um, it's good to know that there's 50 less of, thi of this one and 50 less of Cyclops. So if you're looking to make the set, you don't have to do it today. These aren't like flying off the shelves, but there are they are limited enough to the point where at some point in the future, they're going to be hard to find. So you know, at some point before that point, whatever that might be, it's hard to speculate when it actually will be those that are interested in getting a set should start getting on the bandwagon and and getting the set or not you don't have to do a thing nobody has to do a thing it's just fun to sort of check these out online and just enjoy them for what they are visually without actually spending the money and having them all right well that's my little spiel on the um on the uh on the edition sizes and uh, what could be done with them
um, and when it should be done. Let's talk about the statue. Base. Base is your classic large X base. The large X base is the base that was used for Colossus, the Bone Designs Colossus. It was also the base used for used by for Havoc, Alex Summers, one of my favorite statues. Um, and now it's been used for Beast. It's usually used when you need a character sort of sprawled out a little more um, because they're larger, because their stance is just a little bit more sort of um, less, uh, you know, rigid and sort of museum e, if that's a thing. Well, it is now. Museum is now an adjective after this video, folks. Remember that. Call somebody call Webster's and tell them. Um, so. Uh, the, so the, the base is a large X base, and what's really great about it is that it's silver, just like the other bases for the original five. So Bone Designs made sure that although the bases are different in, in size and shape, because the characters require different sort of size and shape bases, they are all silver, so that the unifying element that you need for the bases is there. The colors are the same, and it works really nicely. Um, so uh, beyond that, we've got... Uh, the, of course, the colors of the costume as well that also unifies the uh, the set together very nicely. The all of them have the same. Well, okay, so there is one slight discrepancy in the yellow for the original Cyclops statue. It was the first statue made of the set. I don't necessarily understand why um, the color was slightly different than the yellow that was used for the rest of the pieces, but it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, and because he is the leader, it just kind of allows him to stand out a little bit more. But, you know, there is a difference, and some people online have mentioned it as sort of being an issue for them. For me, it's not an issue. When you see them on the shelf together, they look fine. I'm not exactly, it doesn't exactly pop out at me so starkly, the difference in color for Cyclops' is yellow versus the rest of the team. So it's fine. It works for me, and it works for a lot of other people. Um, and there's also re there, I mean, it sucks that you would have to get it repainted if you, if that's what you wanted. But there's also there's always that option. You can always just get the yellow repainted to match the rest of them. Um, so the the actual the blue or the black blue or, or if it's just black, the black elements this are the same throughout all the costumes, and it, they look really great. Um, the Kucherak brothers did a really great job with the physique. It's just a beautifully sculpted. Uh, big muscular physique with uh, you know big hands and big feet because that's that's what si that's what Henry McCoy has that's what Beast has he has big hands and big feet it's what allows him to be so sort of uh, dexterous and agile um, because that's really what his mutation is it's like his ability to kind of be this like super acrobat um, that's strong as well um, and what allows him to do that is are in part his you know his big sort of um, feet and hands. Um, they did a really great job of sculpting the feet. You can you can see close-ups on my blog, but like the the toenails are just fantastic. They look freaking real. It's just so much detail was um, was uh, put into them. It just and you need that because they're such defining features of the character. So um, they did him justice in that respect. Um, there's like little hairs sort of drawn onto the feet and the um, the front of the forearms, which is great. I'll, I, I have some exam, again. I have close-ups of that on my blog, so check that out. <clears throat> Just to kind of enhance sort of the quality of the of the statue's look, as you know, representing Beast, who obviously has a little bit of hair here and there before he, he took on all the blue hair, um, which happened later, like around when X Factor, like in the 80s, I think, is when sort of he mutated into the blue. The blue look that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, so the extremities, the hands, look, and feet are sculpted really nicely. Um, the what's really cool about sort of the edges of the the leggings and like the shirt is that there's like there's like extra girth to them. So like it just it actually looks like he's wearing something, and it's not like there was just a different paint color used for the 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 clothing versus the the exposed part of the body it actually it has some texture it looks like he's actually wearing something it feels like something 
um, like his feet are coming out of something. So they, they put in a little bit of extra uh, thought into that, which is really nice. Um, the arms and legs sculpted beautifully. Great job on that. Um, and he's wearing some he's wearing some granny shorts. Looks like granny didn't have any panties to give the original X-Men, which might be a good thing. <laughs> um, uh, you know, unlike traditional uh, superhero garb, they decided to go a little bit more shorts versus panty, which is cool. Um, he's got the X belt. One thing about the X belt, the X belts are slightly different on all the characters, um, which is cool. You know, I mean, it's it's cool because for me, it's like I don't know. It's like everything doesn't need to be perfect, and and just thinking about it, like it, it doesn't. It does make sense that like they wouldn't have like some you know some some seamstress creating their individual costumes to make them uniform, like. You know, maybe so whoever made them, or maybe they made their their own costumes. You know, put in their own unique touches to them. I don't know. The fact is that they all have the X belt. It looks different, but there's X's there. So throughout the entire set, you know, these unifying elements do create sort of the uniformity you need um, in order for it to be like a cohesive set, and it works. It works for me. So the belts are different, but they all look cool together, and you'll see that in the photos that I took. Um, Really nice. They did uh, the Kutrex did a really nice job of like sculpting in wrinkles into the body there, um, and they shaded the yellow with a little bit of light orange, which is nice. Um, the paint job on this is really nicely done. Um, it seems as though there might be some problems with it, al like along the edges of the costume versus the body, but it, there isn't. What what it is is like the costume is like straight, but the body's contoured, and where it meets it. Um, the lo the yellow lines sort of like you know they kind of they kind of follow the curvature of the of the um, the muscular frame that that begins to you know come out of the costume into the blue element and so if you're not looking at it closely it just looks like the lines are done in a really sloppy way but they're actually not done in a sloppy way they're actually done very precisely so overall they did a great job on the paint job arms legs body sculpted lovely and of course most importantly the face the face looks fantastic. Um, he's got the, the mask coming over his head. He's got the exposed mouth. Um, the look on his face is one of like agitation, like he's about to kick some butt, which is great. And, uh, you know, his eyes look fantastic. Nose, um, the, the rest of, uh, of the shape of his head looks great. Everything's perfect. He looks great. The pose is uh, sort of dynamic and captures his sort of acrobatic uh, quality, which is sort of like what he brings into the team. He's He's got the ability to sort of attack from different directions and perform physical feats that Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Iceman, um, and Angel were not able to perform. So it really sort of captures the unique uh, quality of the character and um, and sort of like what he what he brings to the team. Uh, uh, as a unique character and it's sort of like a necessary part of it. Um, so there he is once again, folks. Uh, Beast, the original costume Beast by Bowen Designs. And I just got this about um, half an hour ago. I'm really happy to have it finally. Um, you know, it's uh, it's just one of those things where like, it's like you start getting a set together or like at some point and with these statues it takes so long for for you know the various ones to come out, which is fine. I understand you need time to actually you know create things of quality, so I'm cool with that. Um, but it's like it's really satisfying when they finally get here. It's like ah, oh, I remember like two years ago when I first thought conceived of this set being together. Now you're finally seeing it together, together, and it's like so satisfying. And, and it looks fantastic, and I'm really happy to have it here, and I'm really happy it came out as nicely as it did. And I just want to thank uh, Bowen Designs for once again. Uh, you know, doing doing justice uh, to these characters. Um, as far as like the significance of the original team, I mean, this is the 50th anniversary of the X Men. They've been around for 50 years. There's no better time to sort of, um, sort of, uh, you know, provide the reverence uh, necessary to sort of properly honor, you know, this 50th birthday than to, you know, create a set of the original five uh, X Men at this time. It's just perfect. But 
What's even more significant is that these characters have been brought into the present in the current comic storylines um, by Brian Michael Bendis, as I mentioned in other videos, as a lot of you already know, um, just by reading the comics. And so they're actually driving a lot of the important stories that are happening in the X-Men right now. Uh, it's a great way to sort of, again, honor the tradition of the X-Men on their 50th anniversary to have the original five in the present. Um, and also it just it just creates a great catalyst for a lot of super interesting stories which are playing out right now, which is going to take some time for them to sort of, uh, uh, you know, reach their payoffs. But I, I, I'm like, I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm really happy about it. Um, and so... This statue is not only just cool for what it is, cool for representing the original era, but also like very current, very current, very hip, and um, and on, on that dimension, it, it 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 provides that extra value that uh, I I didn't actually know it would it would carry, you know, when I originally decided to get this set a couple of years ago because back then like there was no indication that that's where the stories would go. So it's really cool. There's just on a lot of levels, this is a great statue, and I'm just really happy to be able to sort of unify my love of the X-Men via my reading, via my statue collecting, and now sharing that with you um, on my video and my blog. As always, thank you for checking out my blog. My blog is X-Men Statues of Future Past .blogspot.com. My YouTube channel is Dr. Remy LeBeau's x -Lair. You can check out my blog post by clicking on the button on the... Um, it should be over here on the frame if you're watching this video outside of my blog and you can check out all the photos that I took of Mr. McCoy here all the various um, details that you can't you may not be able to see uh, in this video even though you should be able to see a lot because it's high definition hey definition is high on this um, and as always um, I think it would behoove you um, to put an X in the box because ain't nobody checking me oh I like to be silly. All right, folks. Uh, I'll catch you all very soon. I have plenty more stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Bye-bye.